Welcome to this discussion on CBDCs, blockchain and privacy. Now this discussion follows on from the OnFIF public paper that we published in September 2020 on the same topic. And that paper is available on our website, as is the discussion that we recorded at the time. I have with me today, Sky Gao from Cypherium and Anniko Zombati from the Central Bank of Hungary. Warm, a warm welcome to you both. So how can digital currencies allow some degree of privacy while ensuring compliance with anti-money laundering regulations and know your customer regulations? Aniko. Well, that's a tough question and also a topical one. As uh, the Econ Committee in Brussels just had a hearing on the consultation on the digital euro, this week, and uh, you probably know that one of the major message of European citizens was that privacy is the most important for them if they are supposed to use uh, the digital currency. Thank you very much. And is that something the Central Bank of Hungary would agree with as well in your plans and views on CBDC? Actually, we see uh, similarly our customers or citizens need, they appreciate uh, the uh, privacy feature of cash very much. And so they change over the, to digital currency would require some safeguards in this regard. Thank you. And so you heard it there, Sky, um, Hungarian citizens, citizens in the Eurozone value privacy very highly. We've seen the ECB say that. We know that from citizen surveys that we've done at OMFIF and elsewhere. How does Cypherium approach this issue of privacy and um, the compliance with regulations? Cypherium transactions are divided into two types, the public transaction and private transaction. In the actual transactions, these two types both use the transaction model that's common to the public blockchains but with some modifications. The public blockchains are fully stored on Cypherium's public blockchain, while the private transactions have two parts. Only the metadata or the transaction ID is stored on the public blockchain, but the actual transaction is stored on the private ledgers of the parties with authorization. When a user submits a private transaction to Cypherium network, the transaction is first encrypted by a key only known to the sender and the receiver, and an isolated black box called Enclave will process and store the transaction data and prevent unauthorized access. And uh, here we have a illustration. This shows how the Cypherian private transaction works. So the public transaction is broadcast to the whole network, uh, while the private transaction is not directly posted on the blockchain network, but sent to a private part called the transaction manager or enclave. And it's also processed inside this isolated environment. After the processing is done, it's sent back as a transaction ID, as a tra confirmation or receipt of the transaction. And then the transaction receipt is uh, published on the public blockchain. Thank you. That certainly looks like a very compelling design. But how do you know that that meets the standards required for privacy? Are the standards clear enough to you? How should the standards of privacy be set in your view, Sky? So the private blockchain transactions can be customized according to the central bank or the regulator's need. And the public blockchain only publish ID, which itself is meaningless. It's only a reference to the content to the transaction. But the central banks and uh, authorized parties could verify the validity of the transactions through that reference, while the entire transaction is only known to themselves. Okay. And from a central bank's point of view, I mean, how should the standards be set um, from a governance point of view? Should there be, a, should it be a clear uh, set in the design stage? Should, there be, should it be principles based? What's your view, Aniko, of how best to set privacy standards when looking at the design of digital money? So when you design your own framework, you have to comply with all the existing requirements. And in this regard, the KYC and AML requirements are, are uh, basic. Uh, uh, and so uh, when uh, the central banks are thinking about this issue, 
they usually find uh, some layered approach to be working. So uh, up to our knowledge, the People's Bank of China is uh, in the most advanced stage, not only in the design, but they are already testing their framework and they are applying uh, so-called managed anonymity or controllable anonymity where different uh, uh, transaction volumes and frequencies uh, have uh, different identification requirement. So for, for a newspaper or probably a cafe, you don't have to reveal your identity, but if you are making bigger uh, payments, uh, then your complete uh, 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 payment uh, details and the ID have to be provided. Thank you, Aniko. Yes, we've heard from the People's Bank of China about how they have set some of these standards. But one of the things that's certainly true is how is this going to be interoperable? The standards of privacy and the views of what is acceptable as a degree of privacy in China may well be different and according to research is different in Europe. So how can this interoperability of, um, in regards to privacy be managed? What are your thoughts on that, Sky? Have you found a solution to that? Sure. We identify interoperability and the private press protection are the two most urgent issues that CBDCs must solve. And Cypherium so tackles these issues with our proprietary technology, the digital currency interoperability framework. The DCAIF consists of a notary scheme cross-ledger framework, a component for financial system integration with ISO 20020 to support, a blockchain network with instant transaction settlement, and a decentralized ID solution. And the Cypherian blockchain serves as a witness for transactions between two digital currencies or assets. And uh, here comes the presentation. So this is the architecture of our decentralized ID. Uh, the top layer is consists of um, the interface for external access, including users, business, identity provider and the supervisors with different accessibility. And this could be customized according to the laws or the regulatory requirements. And uh, the interface layer creates like a, uh, provides a service such as the transaction inquiry and uh, secure communication. So the data communicated through our identity interface layer will be encrypted and uh, only um, provide the data with the proper authorization. And uh, the underlying layer is a service layer. This is our um, transaction management and the smart contract and the data storage layer. So this uh, basic layer will function the functionalities that the blockchain have. And uh, uh, the next slide is our interoperability framework. So we have a two-step process and this um, framework is based on the so-called two-tier delivery model. And in this model, um, both the commercial bank and the central banks are involved. And um, we have this uh, four steps uh, process. And uh, uh, after the four step process is done, um, so you could uh, send a digital asset from the one cryptocurrency or CBDC and convert that to another. And uh, uh, while the um, privacy is also protected during this process. And for more details, you could refer to our full presentation at our exhibition. Thank you, Sky. Um, yes, there's certainly a, a lot of, uh, a great deal of work has gone into ensuring the interoperability and the privacy question there. But there's another question, isn't there? I mean. You could make it as um, effective in terms of its privacy and its security, um, and you can meet all the requirements necessary, but there's still this issue of user acceptance, of adoption. Um, I mean, Aniko, how can central banks um, uh, do the right thing here? Because you want to reassure people that their money is safe, that, um, you know, that, and, and you want to reassure people that the financial workings in any economy are uh, as they wish it to be and as it suits them. But what if people choose simply not to use these types of innovations when they're started? Well, in your view, what's the role of a central bank when it comes to um, you know, sort of CBDCs and privacy and 
uh, user adoption. So actually, in this case, central banks really have to move outside of their comfort zone and they have to follow what the fintechs do. So the fintechs uh, uh, build the customer relationships uh, at the beginning. And so we do have to have our test groups. We do have to have a constant conversation with the potential users and we uh, have to make sure that the demands are, are met uh, during the process and we have to elaborate uh, solutions uh, with which they are uh, comfortable. Thank you, Aniko. And, uh, and Sky, from your point of view, I mean, it might be the, the, the best invention ever. It might be a very clever way of meeting people's privacy requirements, and it might meet all the requirements set by the central bank or the government. But a different degree of reassurance, of psychological reassurance, is required when expecting people to use blockchain for effectively their cash, for their digital currency. What are your thoughts on how a, a public permissionless system like blockchain can reassure people? I think uh, the public blockchain should only be treated as a data storage and uh, the business logic such as smart contracts and uh, identities should be all handled by like the government and the uh, responsible the user bodies. So for example, take an example as CBDC. Uh, the CBDC design should separate transaction processing and identity issuance. Uh, independent identity certification center should be included in the digital currency registration center forming two data islands any user or institution must register with the identity certification center and obtain a private key from the identity certification center binding their identity information to their corresponding private key then generate a digital wallet address Anonymous management of the digital currency registration center and the real name management method of the identity authentication center is ensured. The open content of the registration center is anonymized and desensitized. So in this model, only the government is responsible and has access to the user data and the public blockchain does not store any sensitive data and there is no possibility for private data um, being leaked through the public blockchain. Thank you. Also very interesting, it does strike me that there's probably a bit of work to be done in terms of explaining to people how these things work, because in some ways people are happy to, to you know, use a, an email account or a Hotmail account, but the level of um, sophistication that you're, that you're talking about here may go over the heads of some people. We did a very interesting report on trust in central banks at OMFIF and who people trust to, to, to hold their cash, which you can also look up online. But I suppose I'd just like to finish by asking each of you what you think is going to happen next. Do you think that there'll be a sort of, uh, sort of ready-made privacy solution for CBDCs in the coming years? When do you expect to see um, this move forward to the next stage of, 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 of adoption? I mean, Annika, what are your thoughts on that? I think that uh, central banks have the ambitious plans, uh, so the ECB announced that they will have a digital euro approximately five years uh, uh, later. So I think the tough part is still ahead of us and uh, we have to uh, provide uh, trustworthy solutions to our citizens. And uh, we do have to make sure that we are not uh, entering uh, those territories which are not the business of the central bank. Thank you very much. And Sky, if you were to put a number on the number of years that you'd expect to see before we see these types of solutions becoming mainstream, how long would you give it? I think uh, in a couple of months to a couple of years, but the actual speed will be faster than anyone could expect. And two months uh, to two years. Well, that's quite something. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much. This has been a fantastic discussion. And if you want to connect with either of these two individuals, please use the swap card platform to send a message to Anico or to send a message to Sky or to go to Cypherium's um, electronic booth. And we can continue this discussion further. Thank you both for joining me. Please stay tuned.